Hello and welcome to The Well Church. My name is James and it's great to be with you once again today. If you're watching on YouTube, it's fantastic to be able to join us in the virtual world. If you're at the Chalmers College, good morning to you. If you're at the IC, then good afternoon to you guys there as well. How great is it they were able to be back together meeting in person? If you haven't been able to get booked in this week, then do take a, take a look at the links that will be um, that are already available for next week um, and get booked in to one of the morning or the afternoon uh, meetings, whichever one works best for you. But what's happening today? Well, Tony is going to be leading us in worship, helping us to fix our eyes on Jesus. Whether you're at home, whether you're at Charmwood at the URC, let's be encountering God. Let's be lifting up our praises, lifting up our worship to him. Obviously, if you're at home, you can join in with the singing, whereas a child in the URC, it's slightly different. But in either way, wherever we are, it's about our hearts and the posture of our hearts. So let's be fixing ourselves on him, rooting ourselves in the truth of uh, scripture. And if you have scripture to share, please do, or an encouragement to share, please do email Martin with it. Or if you're at one of the venues, um, share it once the, the meeting or once the worship is over. Once we've worshipped today, we're going to be having uh, Robert Grayson, who's an elder at Emmanuel Church in Oxford, which is part of our Catalyst Hub. He's going to be coming and sharing with us this morning. He'll be continuing our well-being series this morning or this afternoon, looking at well-being, uh, vocational well-being. It's more than just work. It's about our voluntary experiences. It's about how we use and give our time, whether that's voluntary in the community, voluntary at home. Actually, vocational is all-encompassing. And it's how we're looking at that, the well-being of ourselves within that sphere of our lives. Without further ado, we're going to hand over to Tony now as we fix our eyes once again on Jesus. Today, he's going to be helping me with worship. So let's do it. Let's worship God together.
all that we do. You just love us, Lord. You love us, Lord. We thank you so much for your love, your love for us. It's just wonderful.
thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're with us. Thank you, Lord, that you're holy, you're worthy, you're worthy of our praise today. We just pray that you would just fill us right now with your love and with your guidance. So I don't know about you church, but time has flown by over the last few months and I have absolutely no idea, no idea how we've managed to end up in mid-June already. But this is the time of the year when we say goodbye to our students, um, whether for the, the summer or for good. Um, for those of our students who have finished their degrees and are moving on to new adventures, new jobs, new careers, new places. Um, so normally we would have loved to have the guys that are leaving uh, come and just to the front of church and to share a bit about um, what they're doing and so we can pray for them. This year it's going to look a bit different but we've asked some of our finalists just to send in a short video just to say what they're going to be doing next year um, as well as just a message from them to you so you can be thinking of them and praying for them. Um, so yeah just enjoy this and let's be blessing and thinking and praying for our students um, because yeah they're an amazing part of our church. Hi everyone, so after graduation I'm not really sure what's in store for me looking at jobs currently in the world of sport but prayer for what area would be really valued. Um, I've also just absolutely loved being part of this church and um, thank you for the investment that everyone's put into my faith and for all the one-to-one -one meetups and um, yeah just really um, me feeling part of the family. Um, I'm going to miss you all and um, go easy on the hugs. Hello, um, so I am off now to Devon. At the time you are hearing this, I will actually be starting my new job tomorrow. Um, I'm off um, working at Willacom and doing sand dune restoration with the National Trust, volunteering for a year there, and then I don't know where I'm going next. But it has been uh, amazing to be a part of the well and have a nice life. Hello our family, it's Carmela. The memory of my first visit at the well doesn't seem so long ago, so saying goodbye feels too soon. Nevertheless, I am extremely grateful to be a part of a small church that has made a big impact in my university life. For the friends I have made at CG, the children and the lovely parents at Livewires, I am extremely grateful for your counsel as well. Though I may not have had the chance to meet every single person, the faith that you all emanated got me through troubled days. So thank you to this ministry and your continued support for students. Hey, I'm Percy. I've um, been a part of The Well since 2017. Uh, currently, my plans for next year is I'm going to be working up in Huddersfield uh, as a robotics engineer. So that will be starting uh, middle of August. And I'm really excited about that. That should be a really uh, interesting and fun step for me uh, in terms of my career. Um, in terms of what I've loved about the well, uh, I feel like for me, the main thing has been the community groups. Uh, it's really allowed me to uh, really feel involved in the church and feel part of the wider, wider community uh, instead of just being with, with other students. And I've really appreciated that. Uh, so I guess... The, Finally, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's made me feel really welcome, uh, especially the Worms and Ben Prosser. Uh, you've been great as community group leaders. Uh, yeah, thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Jamie, finally engineering student, and I want to say thank you for everyone's done with me at the well. My plans after I leave university are to take a year out and do a master's in motorcycle engineering at Cranfield or automotive engineering at Loughborough. You know, and I would say the one thing I really loved about being part of this church is the community aspect. I felt always welcome since day one. And that's been really grateful and they've always checked up me and everything. So I just want to say good luck to everyone on their journeys, moving forward and may God bless everyone. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Jonathan and this has been my third and final year at the university studying aeronautical engineering. I'll be going to join the RAF as an engineering officer, so uh, I'll be starting my training soon over in Grantham. Uh, I've loved my three years here at the well, uh, the chance for you know, community and fellowship and 
uh, just the opportunity to develop my faith. Um, as you, many of you will know that I got baptized here in the well uh, in 2018. Um, so I just want to give a huge thank you to the church for the support and prayers that I've had over the last three years. Hi everyone, uh, it's been great to be a part of the well. I've absolutely loved just how welcoming and, and truly it might sound cheesy, but how much of a family the, the well feels like. Um, in September, uh, exciting, I'm going to be going up to Scotland to do a master's in psychology. So please, uh, please pray for that. And I hope that I do see you all again at some point. Um, hopefully to come and visit some of the wonderful friends I've made at the well. Hi everyone, so I'm currently unsure what I'm doing next year, a bit of a work in progress, but prayer for guidance and that would be really appreciated, just that I'd go where God wants me to be and I'd really listen to him on that. But I want to say thank you, I've loved being part of The Well for the past four years, you guys have been such a family to me, you made me feel so, so welcome and I've really grown in my faith as well from being here. Uh, I've loved just the opportunities to get involved in so much, um, yeah, youth, you've been amazing, I've loved getting to know you all, um, community group, um, you've been a massive support to me, massive encouragement and yeah, we've had lots of fun as well. So, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you. I will miss you all so much if I'm not around next year. And, yeah, I will definitely, definitely be back to visit. But, yeah, I will miss you all. Bye. So, as well as uh, the guys that you've seen there, Emily and Mayowa will also be leaving us. Um, so, please be playing, praying for them in their next steps also. Church, I just want to encourage you, um, please get around these guys, support them, encourage them, pray for them if you, if you see them or just be praying for them in your own time. Um, as well, why not drop them a message in the coming weeks just to, I don't know, touch base or an encouraging word, just to love on them as they move on to their next steps. And, you know, keep in contact, keep in contact with those students that you've really got to know because um, I know that they'll value it. Um, students, it has been a joy for myself to get to know all of you whether at my time at uni or on the student team this year. I know from the student team, from Twiggy, from Joe, from Michaela, we all just want to say like we love you guys and we've loved seeing how you've grown this year and how you've taken this year on with all its challenges um, and we're excited for what God's got in store for you and we know that you're going to be a blessing um, wherever you are. Um, I just want to just want to say to you guys, you know, go, go shine God's light wherever you go. Um, because yeah he's going to do amazing things for you and he's got good works for you um wherever you end up uh yeah so we just want to, I just want to say i love you guys i'm going to miss you guys a lot and i know the church as a whole is also going to miss you um so yeah bless you all um and i look forward to, to having an eye on on what you all get up to in the coming years and for and for life um so yeah bless you guys Tony, thank you so much for leading us in worship there. And wasn't it great to hear from our departing students? Um, you guys are going to be missed so much across your time in Loughborough and the time at the World Church. You've given so much to the church, and I know we're going to miss you greatly. It's hopefully not a final goodbye, because I'm sure you'll be back to visit us. Um, I'll be really excited to hear what you guys get up to once you, you have left town. But it's also a time to look forward for you guys to look forward to what comes next, but also for us to look forward to the autumn uh, when new students will arrive, but also our existing students will come back. Some who have been around uh, a little bit less this year, others who haven't been around at all, maybe because of COVID or maybe because of a placement year. So something that we can look forward to is new students, a new wave of our student activities as Hannah Gooding takes over leading that. Obviously, some of you guys are there at Charnwood College and others of you at the URC. And because we are opening up, last week was the first time I'd been part of uh, a wider opening up of, of a church. Um, and it was, it was great to be back in the room, back with people. Just to have the presence of others around was a wonderful experience. It's yeah, incredibly well organised, as you'd imagine. Um, but yeah, a really, really good time to be back together. Just so you guys who are watching on YouTube are aware, we are still going to be producing the video alongside having the two meetings, um, but only until the 4th of July, um, just so that we can continue um, doing what we can with the skills and the capacity that we have. So we'll be doing a morning and afternoon meeting as well as the YouTube for the next few weeks. You can book in to our uh, in-person gatherings through uh, the booking form on the church suite. Um, if you check on there, you'll be able to find the morning and the afternoon sessions for what's coming up. 
Everyone is welcome to come to both. Um, however, there will only be organised kids' activities at the morning one. Um, but like I said, anyone can come to either session. As we head into the summertime, now we've had some great weather recently. It's slightly tailed off over this weekend, but hopefully it'll be back again. But as we look towards the summer, community groups won't be happening um, as normal throughout July and August to give our leaders a well-deserved rest. They've done such an amazing job over the past, what, 18 months, two years, on top of the awesome job they do anyway. But it also means it gives us a chance to refresh what we're doing, to connect with those outside of our community groups and reconnect with the wider church. This will be starting from the 8th of July as we have a prayer meeting um, and this will set a pattern throughout the summer months of having a single um, midweek whole church activity on top of our Sunday meeting. From the 11th of July it will just be a single meeting on um, the Sunday morning at Charnwood College and it really gives an opportunity for us to gather together in those focused times of being together for worship, whether that's on a Sunday morning or a prayer meeting midweek, or just for those more social times, such as going for walks and picnics on Sundays, but also games and different activities during the week. If you're new and you want to find out more about what's coming out through the summer, um, and just to find out a little bit more about us as a church as well, you can by following us on social media, at World Church Loughborough. You can drop us an email, admin at theworldchurch.org, or check out our website, and you'll be able to find out more information about who we are and how you can get connected in there. I'm going to hand over to uh, Robert in a minute, who's going to be introduced by Martin, so we can hear a little bit more about him um, and find out a little bit more about the... Uh, his church in Oxford, um, and then he's going to be continuing our series looking at well-being as we look at vocational well-being. But I'm just going to pray before we hand over to Martin. Yeah, Father God, I just pray that wherever we are today, wherever setting we're in, however our weekend or our week has gone, as Robert comes to speak to us now, Lord, I pray that you can be ministering to our hearts, to our minds. Helping us to reflect on our lives as they are and how you are speaking into our lives and where we need to change, but also where we can be encouraged. Father, help us to seek you through this time as we listen and as we reflect on what Robert preaches. Amen. Well, hi, folks. I'm joined here by Robert Grayson. Uh, Robert's one of the elders from Emmanuel Church Oxford. He's going to be preaching in a few minutes. So um, I thought it would be really good to just get to know Robert a little bit. So, Robert, you're part of Emmanuel Church, part of the same family of churches, a catalyst as us. Why don't you just introduce yourself to us? Hi, folks at the Well Church. I, I'm married. I've uh, been married since 1984, so you can work out how long that is. Um, my, my wife's a uh, mathematician. She gave the number straight away. Um, we've got two kids. Um, one is uh, our son in, lives in Berlin, uh, married with two children, and our daughter lives in Edinburgh. Uh, married with a six-month-old baby. Um, we've been in Oxford since 2012. Um, God moved us on from where we'd been in southwest London for quite a long time. I'd worked as a primary school teacher and as a pastor, and since coming to Oxford, I've worked as a primary school teacher, and latterly since 2014 as a administrative assistant in a university medical research center. Sounds like a, a fascinating lot of things you've uh, been up to there Robert. So before I say anything else I just want to say a massive thank you actually for, for joining us today and thank you for, for uh, preaching. We're looking forward to that. Emmanuel Church is part of the Catalyst Network, part of New Frontiers. Um, we've just had the Catalyst Festival recently, which is all great and good fun. Um, but uh, you've been around part of the New Frontiers family for some time, haven't you, Robert? Just what does it mean to you to be part of this big family of churches? OK, well, it's, it's far more than the festival. Um, I know that you are part of the same hub that Emmanuel's part of, that our uh, senior leader Matt uh, gathers. Um, so we hear little bits about that. It's an opportunity to do things together. So 
Uh, we've been involved in a church plant recently, but we know it wasn't just us. Uh, there have been others who've been supporting as we planted to Sheffield. Um, it also gives us global connections. Um, so we're, we're often in prayer meetings with people in, it might be Ukraine or Turkey, uh, which just connect us with what God's doing all over the place. And uh, yeah, stops us being isolated. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I think uh, it also means that, you know, we can just pick up like this with people that maybe we've known only as a name or whatever, but we know we're on the same page and about the same thing. So yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. So this morning, um, we're carrying on our series on well-being, and it turns out that you guys in Oxford are doing exactly the same teaching at the moment. So it's a, a lovely opportunity to um, kind of partner with you. So, uh, Robert, just, just explain to us, how have you found the last 15 months? Because it's been so tough and so varied, but how have you found that negotiating that and keeping a well, trying to keep a, a good sense of well-being through that. So a, a challenge for us during lockdown was uh, an attempt to move house. Uh, and I'm happy to say that that happened last September, um, but that made it unusual. Um, and in terms of a place to be living uh, during lockdown, it has been a gift because there are lots of walks we can do from just just our front door. So, so that's been great, although clearly we've not been able to get to know neighbours as we might have liked, although that's beginning to, uh, to open up. On the work front, I found it very, well, just disconnected to uh, be working from home almost all the time. Um, one of the appeals of working in the office when it happens again, is the camaraderie. Um, but I've been told by my boss that, well, we won't all be here together. And that kind of takes away the, almost the attraction of going back. So not sure what that's gonna look like going forward. Um, one of the really hard things has been missing family. As I mentioned, children are a far, far flung and the I don't know when we'll next see our, our grandkids in Germany, um, but hoping to see our, our granddaughter from Edinburgh very soon. Um, so I found the walks uh, a real restorative part of my day. Uh, we're quite close to the river here and that, that, that just feeds my uh, spirit. Um, walking beside a river and thinking of the 23rd Psalm and, uh, mm. and that's helped. And we've got used to these kind of Zoom interactions. Uh, we've had a big buy-in in our connect group. So even people who've joined the church in lockdown, you kind of feel you get to know because you've been meeting intensively on, on Zoom. So there've been some challenges and, and there've been some, some helps. Great. Great. Well, it's been tough hasn't it but God's been good and God will continue to be good and uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you've got to say about vocational well-being so Robert thank you so much for giving your time to us and I know there's uh, going to be a couple of snippets from some other people from Emmanuel Church which uh, looking forward to, to hearing that as well so thanks so much for your time God bless you and I hope we can get to know you a bit more in the future as well Robert thank you thanks for having me Martin and, and everyone As we think about vocational well-being this morning, I suspect I'm not alone in sometimes imagining that, that there's a, a vocational hierarchy. And the closer you are to the top, the, the easier you're going to be able to relate to this whole area. So pastors and, and anyone called to church planting, th th this is made for them. Well, I want to explode that myth and 
demolish that hierarchy by celebrating ordinary work. Jesus did ordinary work. When the word became flesh, when God incarnated himself on earth, he did ordinary work. For the greater part of his working life, Jesus was a tradesman. In Mark 6 and verse 3, he's called a tecton, Greek word for a, for a builder who used his hands. No less doing the will of the father who sent him when he was making stuff than when he was healing or preaching. So whatever we do, manual, clerical, administrative, professional, paid or voluntary, whatever we do can be vocational. So fast forward to this evening, when it's the end of the weekend and all of its recreational possibilities and our minds turn to Monday morning. Sunday night is a great time to check in on our sense of vocational well-being. Do we have any sense of purpose about what we'll be doing tomorrow morning? Do we have any reason to get up tomorrow? Well, tomorrow morning may be OK, but, but what about when my degree finishes? What then? For others, it, it's retirement that brings a sense of uh, vocational well-being into question. What will I do now? And for many, it's the pressures of the pandemic uh, that threaten vocational well-being with, with job security and unemployment for some and overwork for others. I've asked a couple of people to share some of their recent story in this area, the highs and the lows, the challenges and, and what they have found helpful. And we're going to hear from Tim and Catherine now. So I've worked in the charity sector for almost all of my professional life, firstly at Christians Against Poverty, where I launched the Cat Money course, and now for the last decade at Oxfam in a variety of roles across the organisation. I've always had a strong desire to work in the third sector, but it's not always been easy to find the right job. Like any organisation or company, charities are made up of people in finance, IT, HR, project management and the rest. Just because you're working for an organisation that fits your mission and values doesn't automatically mean perfect job satisfaction. As an example, a couple of years ago I spent just over a year working as a major gifts fundraiser. I realised pretty early on that I wasn't much good at asking people for money quite important element of the role, so going to work became quite uncomfortable for a time until I was able to work out my next step. Right now I'm doing a job that I really enjoy, but the learning curve has been steep and there have been plenty of challenges too, so it's not been plain sailing. As well as trying to find the role that's the right fit for me, the last few years have also had some significant challenges. In 2018 Oxfam was at the centre of some very negative media coverage. It had a real impact across all our staff and for many of us it felt very much like a personal attack on our work. It's not easy to go to work every day when the organisation you love is front page news for a fortnight for all the wrong reasons. There have also been circumstances that have meant long periods of uncertainty. Right now we're going through our third restructure in as many years and I'm currently at risk of redundancy. So even when you're able to remain positive that can become quite wearying. During challenging times at work, I've found it so important to remain thankful. Whatever the outcome of difficult situations, knowing that I can trust God to provide has always been something I've had to intentionally reflect on, along with all the times he's provided for me in the past. I think being open to change and new opportunities has also been a significant factor in trying to maintain a sense of vocational well-being. Sometimes, still not knowing what I want to be when I grow up can be frustrating but it's also helped me to remain open to where God might lead me next, without holding on too tightly to what's happened in the past. Hi, so I'm Catherine Brown. Um, I work as a GP um, and I'm also a clinical director for a network of 
for practices um, in Oxford City. Um, and more recently, um, uh, my life has been very much focused around COVID. So um, I've been part of the COVID response um, and also now part of uh, leading a vaccination site as well. Like the last few years have been really quite up and down for me. Um, I started my career as um, a GP um, after having my son Josiah um, and I went straight into partnership um, and it was quite a demanding um, role and um, uh, although a very rewarding place to work it was um, really quite tough um, and after having had my second child Abigail I unfortunately about a year after that ended up um, having to have some time off work um, with stress and burnout. Yeah, I had quite a long period of time off work and then quite a long phased return back into the workplace. Um, so after that I kind of it did force me to kind of reevaluate um, my priorities and, and what I wanted to do and in the end I, I did end up having to or taking the decision to retire to resign from partnership um, and um, I took on a new role um, that was um, leading um, a network of um, four different practices and I'm now working as a GP in one of the other practices in, in the network um, so it was a new challenge, a um, kind of opportunity to really make a difference, which I've discovered for me is a real driver um, in my uh, career and in my kind of vocational well-being, if you like. Yeah, that was quite exciting and um, it was becoming more demanding, but then um, COVID then hit and things changed really quite dramatically. Yeah, I think this year has been really tough in the context of like quite a few difficult years from a work perspective um, and I think having um, making a difference as my kind of key driver can although that's a really brilliant thing actually can really mean that it's quite difficult if I kind of hit a time where I don't feel like what I'm doing is really having that impact that I would hope um, so I can feel a bit despondent about things if, if that's if I don't feel that, that what I'm doing is really making a difference um, so I think for me remembering the importance that you know my work and my vocation isn't what defines me in God's eyes um, uh, and I think that's a really important thing for me to be able to kind of cling to but it's not always that easy to do um, and especially when work isn't going particularly well um, or and, and particularly as well I think when I felt that God's really led me into each of the roles that I've done it can be really difficult then if it's not quite as expected. And for me also, I'm, you know, I'm quite an enthusiastic, hard-working person and I, I do find it really hard to boundary myself um, to protect my own well-being um, and that's partly, I think, driven by this strong need to kind of feel like I'm making a difference um, and unfortunately the workload in general practice seems to be increasing year on year so it's becoming increasingly difficult to kind of get the balance right um, between kind of meeting the needs of um, my patient and working in a way that's kind of honouring to God um, whilst also looking after myself. Um, so and I think the other thing is I found it the challenge of being, you know, working in a really demanding job whilst also being a mum and a wife and everything else, um, quite a difficult balance to get. And I'm not, I don't always get it right. In fact, a lot of the time I get it wrong. Um, and, you know, I'm still very much on a journey from that point of view. So things that have kind of really helped me, I think, in recent years, first of all, trying to do the basics of well-being, um, well um, so um, things like sleeping well eating well um, trying to exercise regularly um, spending time with um, my children with my family um, and spending quality time with God and um, they're all things that I know that if I'm doing all of those things um, then um, I'm usually then much more at my best um, obviously there is times where I um, neglect parts of those and I definitely um, do feel the effects of that so yeah I know that if I've nailed all of those things that's the times when I'm often performing at my best um, and then the second thing is um, 
uh, retreat. So um, when I had some time off with stress, um, I had 24 hours away um, at a retreat centre not far from where we live um, at Stanton House um, and it was brilliant. It was one of the best, most helpful times I've had away um, just to really um, press into God and to really hear from God um, and really listen and, and kind of be able to take away any distraction um, and really let God um, speak into into my life um, so I'd really recommend that even if you can't get a full 24 hours away and um, just bits of time where you can really um, spend time listening to God I think is really helpful and then a th the third thing is coaching um, so I've had coaching a few times um, through the most recent times and um, particularly at kind of key points when I've kind of been changing um, jobs or roles or responsibilities or going through difficult um, periods in my in, in my with my responsibilities so um, that I found really really helpful just to have a, a kind of outside person to give a bit of guidance help you think through um, kind of what your priorities are and how you want to tackle a, bit of a particular situation um, so yes I would highly highly recommend um, coaching as that um, uh, additional aid to um, managing your vocational well-being. Thank you Catherine and Tim for being so open and, and for sharing what's been helpful to you. If there was any New Testament character whose vocational well-being was, was in the red zone, it was Peter in John chapter 21. And we're going to look at Jesus' interaction with him and seek to learn from it for our own vocational well-being. Peter had failed big time, having boasted that even if all fall away, I will not, I will never disown you. He'd gone on to do that three times and he wept bitterly over it. So there's that failure in the background to what we're going to read. But there's also since that time being two occasions just a week apart where the risen Jesus has appeared to him and his fellow disciples in their own lockdown and commissioned them. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. You'd think that would have sorted it for Peter, like, like going to a Catalyst festival but it hadn't. He goes fishing with some of his mates on the Sea of Galilee, something, something he knows how to do, and it proves fruitless. All night long, they catch nothing. So there's failure and fruitlessness in the background to what we're going to read. And if you can relate to either of those, be encouraged because there's no condemnation from Jesus here. His first word to them from the lakeshore is, friends. And then he says, uh, you'll find some on the right hand side of the boat. And then he says, come and have breakfast. There is a conversation with Peter that's coming to address his vocational well-being, but first, Jesus attends to their physical, emotional and relational well-being. These things are all bound up together, as, as Catherine reminded us. So let's pick up the story in John chapter 21, verses 15 to 19. When they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. 
The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and, and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. When they had finished eating, I love it. Let's have breakfast together first. Then I, I don't know what impact it had on Peter being addressed in this way. Simon, son of John. It's every time. Simon, son of John. But if Jesus or anyone for that matter addressed me as Robert, son of Robert, I come from a long line of Roberts, I would think you know me, you know my family. Jesus knew Peter very well. He knew his family. He knew his failure. He knew his fruitless fishing. He knew where the fish were and he knew what Peter needed for his vocational well-being. And this same Jesus knows all about you and me and what we need. There, there are at least three callings in this conversation. And the first one is implied by the questions. Three times Jesus asks, do you love me? Three times, as many times as he disowned him, Peter declares his love for Jesus. Do you love me? Jesus asks. Our first question might well be different, whether we're offering or, or seeking help uh, with vocational well-being. What do you enjoy doing? What do you want me to do? I'm after some careers guidance here. But well-being precedes well-doing here. Jesus wants to know do you love me? Are we friends? Peter's being called, first of all, to a love relationship with Jesus. And whether we've been following Jesus for years or, or we've barely begun, our first calling is the same, to a love relationship with him, to be friends with him. Check out the the talk on spiritual well-being for more of that. And don't don't miss the order of priority here in a, in a rush to be volunteering here or applying there. The Apostle Paul commends the Christians in Thessalonica for their labour prompted by love. Their labour and ours can be prompted by, by all sorts of things. It can be prompted by location. That's important. By salary. We need to pay the bills. By, by status. It's time I was promoted. But if those things take precedence over our love relationship with Jesus then like the rich young man in Mark 10, we'll end up sad. The second calling in this conversation is triple underlined and explicit. Feed my lambs. 
take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. Peter is being called to a new shared pastoral responsibility, one that he followed to the end of his life, as evidenced by the letters he wrote to to encourage and safeguard fellow Christians. Our calling may, may not be to pastoral responsibility, but it will be to shared responsibility. What do I mean by that? Notice whose sheep and lambs Jesus, uh, Peter is going to be feeding. They're Jesus's. Yes, P- Peter is to shepherd the flock, but it's always as an under shepherd. He acknowledges that Jesus is the chief shepherd in 1 Peter 5. It's always a shared responsibility. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Your calling uh, may involve customers, clients, children, parents, publications, patients. Surely if the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, as Psalm 24 celebrates, then you're called to a shared responsibility for his customers, his clients, his publications, his patients. I believe God led me to the job that I'm in. I too easily presume that he then left me to get on with it, that the emails, spreadsheets, minutes of meetings are solely my responsibility, forgetting that he is the chief administrator. The third calling in this conversation comes by way of a prophecy. Do you ever think, If only someone would prophesy what God is calling me to. Well, Peter gets that sort of help for his vocational well-being here. And the gist of it is, Peter, you're called to lose your life. And the thing is, this isn't new to Peter. He's heard Jesus say similar things before. In Matthew 10 and verse 38, anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And again in Matthew 16 and verse 24, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself. And take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. And those words were for all disciples of Jesus. You'll find vocational well-being by losing your life for me. For Peter, ultimately, it, it meant martyrdom. But for every disciple, it it means giving up stuff, not holding on too tightly, were Tim's words. Not my will, but yours be done, prayers. Taking the place of a servant, washing up the coffee mugs that colleagues leave behind or, or whatever it is that no one gets paid to do where you'll be on Monday morning. So Peter is given three callings to help his vocational well-being. He's called to a love relationship with Jesus, to a shared responsibility under Jesus and to losing his life for Jesus. And so are we. I'd like to end by commissioning us. We commission church planters, don't we? Send them out with prayer to the work that God has called them to do. I think we all need periodically recommissioning to whatever God has called us to on Monday morning. 
So let me pray for us as we turn our minds to whatever that is. Lord Jesus, you said, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus, whatever we're doing tomorrow, whether we're building something or healing someone, whether it's basic or advanced, would you send us out in the power of your spirit to lose our lives in serving you and so bring glory to God. Amen. I just pray those words, I surrender all, would just sink into our hearts and that we just be able to take that with us into our weeks and just know that um, we can just give ourselves over to you, Lord. Amen. Have a great week, guys.